Hello, everyone. We're back again at Dr. James McConnell's The Small Business Network with co-hosts Brittany Wise and Carol Harper-Poe. Hello, everyone. With expert practitioner Carla Murphy, all the way from Buffalo. How are you doing, Miss Carla? I'm doing well, thank you. How's everyone? Doing hey, pretty good, doing pretty good. good. Uh, good. I know here it's, it's been nice and sunny lately, uh, of what we've been going through. Out there, I remember you told me it got in the 60s, and then you said on the weekend it's going to go back down to the 30s, right? Absolutely. It's 39 degrees now. Ah, oh, wow. Man, and, and beautiful Dallas. We're warm right now. I know, about 70s, huh? 70s, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes Ms. Carla now. can be jealous, you know. <laughs> she can be you jealous to... of this weather sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess while we're talking to, to Ms. Carla, we'd like to get into uh, March Madness information. Ms. Carla, what? Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Miss Carol. Ms. Carol. That's Miss Carol. Carol. I said Carla. I said the wrong word. I meant Carol. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry, guys. Miss Carol. Confused. March Madness information. What and when? All right. So the March Madness. It's about uh, my books. I cut the prices down. They was um, twenty dollars. My soft cover was twenty dollars. I went down ten dollars. Can you believe it? Ten dollars. Wow. Ten dollars. That's why Christ. it's called madness. I love it. March That's madness. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> and the Kindle was nine ninety nine. But okay. pick this, five ninety nine. Really? Can't beat that. You can't because uh, I got that one. Because right? you got that one, and I, I appreciate your partner. You got it. You and got everybody it. else, come aboard because this mad madness in your name will go in the pot for a drawing for a surprise. I won't tell you what it is. Okay. But Dr. James got an idea, but yeah, uh, yeah. we're gonna leave it right there. I can't there. wait to get in that drawing. Uh -oh. All right. Uh -oh. <laughs> so it will be all of this month for the uh, month of March, I and mean, I may extend it. I may okay. come up with something special in the next month, in the uh, month of April, my birthday. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yes, that's it, Dr. J. Okay, well, let's talk about social media and uh, Amazon, Instagram, Twitter. All right, Amazon. All of my books are on Amazon on the author page. You can look me up, Carol D. Hopper, uh, Carol Poe, or whatever, however you want to look at it, but always put the D in there. Always so put the D. The D. The D, not for dirty. No. Okay. That's it's vitamin, for, vitamin D. That's right. It's vitamin for D. Denise. Okay. Denise. Gotcha. So, but Carol Denise Harper is us. Uh, what my books are up on Amazon. I also have a website. Okay. Uh, it is www.cdhboutique.com. You can, that is my uh, website. But the books that I have on special, you can get it on Amazon and Kindle. And the Twitter and Instagram. Twitter will be CD Harper 2021. Okay. And uh, Instagram. It's Carol Poe Harper. And TikTok. TikTok. At Carol Poe. How okay. sweet it is. Absolutely. Well, we're going to move into alignment with Miss Brittany. Okay. All right. Miss Brittany, are you ready for me, girl? Yeah, I think so. All what, right. What now, you got? Tell us about this alignment and what does it mean to be in alignment? So, when I'm speaking on alignment, I'm talking about being in alignment with source, the most high God. Okay. <clears throat> when that. you're in alignment, it's like you are one with, with him. And whatever it is that he wants you to do, you're like, okay, I'll take a back seat. That's right. And I'll, I'll move forward based on what you want Absolutely. to the most high God. Mm -hmm. I love all it. right, all right, I, I like it. that. And how do you stay in alignment? Um, that's the tricky part. Because, you know, <laughs> there's so many things spiritually we, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm but with spirit, spirituality. So there are different spirits that are always attacking us to get us off course. Right. And God's only goal is to keep our mind on him. Right. So how do we stay in alignment? You can pray, you can meditate. Um, one of the things that I find that I do is I go back, I do a gratitude list, mm -hmm. but I also go and I determine what is it that I'm supposed to be doing. Right. And I find that through my years of you know, spirituality, the spiritual journey, I find when I'm out of, when I feel like I'm out of alignment, mm -hmm. it's because I'm getting ready to elevate. Okay. It's like a transformation, you know, just talking about going from the caterpillar, caterpillar to a butterfly. Absolutely. That's that cocoon phase that we got to walk through by ourselves. That's that darkness that makes you feel like you're out of alignment because you don't hear from God. You know, it's, it's like I'm in a dark place and I'm not hearing from God. 
and you feel like you're out of alignment. Right. But in reality, you're just going through a transformation. And once you get through that transformation, then it's a new perspective. You're now a butterfly. You're, you're, you're something new. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Well, Miss Carla, how do you stay in alignment? I stay in alignment through prayer. It helps me to focus and then being open to yield to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. How about you, Dr. James? Well, I stay in alignment by trying to be, um, what's the word, um, balanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to, uh, you have to do your prayers. You have to try to do your meditation. Right. You have to think about your business and you have to think about your family or your kids or both. Absolutely. Uh, you have to... Um, eat. You mm -hmm. have to try to be healthy. Right. Uh, you know, so I try to keep a balance. Absolutely. I, awesome. I did. Oh, I follow that cab. You, you guys are absolutely right. I agree. Okay. Steps for starting a business. Okay. What are the steps for starting a business, Miss <laughs> Brittany? So when, when you first start a business, I usually tell my consultants, you need the basic foundation. You okay. need your website, your logo, <laughs> your business name, your business incorporated, your EIN number, um, and then you need your certifications if you're minority owned, woman owned, veteran owned. You, that's based, those are the steps. You just, okay. uh, and then if you're a licensed professional, like a CPA or an attorney, you want to make sure that you've got all your licensing in order right. before you go forth. And, you know, make sure that you have different, whatever your business industry requires, mm -hmm. like a, an attorney. Mm -hmm. There may be other state requirements and state fees and mandates that you have to pay for. Right. You want to do that research to make sure that you have all of that in order okay. when you start your business. Okay. okay. Well, Dr. James, how did, how did you start your business, your steps? Well, the um, steps I took was more like, um, let me try to remember so long ago. I was 23. Oh, wow. 23 That's or 24. You date yourself? You want to tell us how old you are now? In my... <laughs> In my late 40s. Okay. Little path to me. Uh -huh. so, well, we so, see the gray. We see the gray. <laughs> you see the gray. That's why I keep it shaved most okay. of the time. Okay. So you can't tell. All right now. But uh, I guess uh, the first thing was I was working a job at the time and I put in a notice and I started with dent repair that first day. Okay. And I focused on that for about a, a, a couple of weeks okay. till I felt like I was making some money. Then I started adding on stuff. Okay. okay. So that's okay. how mine started. Miss Carla, how about you, ma'am? I started from just having a passion to help people and just in every which way I could to develop, mentor, and resource people. Okay. So that was how I did it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. How sweet it is. Wow. We're going to move into uh, social entrepreneurship, and that is now you, Miss Carla. I didn't mess up the, the name this time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jane. What is social, so social entrepreneurship? entrepreneurship. Sorry. Well, social entrepreneurship is an approach by individual groups, startup companies, or entrepreneurs. They develop, they fund, implement solutions to social, cultural, and environmental issues. The concept can be applied to a wide range of organizations or businesses, which can vary in size, their aims, or their beliefs. Um, it's also important because it provides a framework for businesses to find their own success in the pursuit of helping others. Um, it's a constant source of motivation for employees. And so a, a social entrepreneur is a different kind of social leader who applies practical solutions to social problems that combine innovation, resourcefulness, and opportunity uh, by finding new products, services, and approaches to social problems, which helps them to focus foremost on social value and creation. That was a mouthful, Miss Carla. Okay. You have anything to add to that, Miss Carol? Mm, I don't. I can't follow that cab you at can't. the moment. No. How about that's... you, Miss Brittany? <laughs> <laughs> she look, Miss Carla covered everything for the most. <laughs> I'm telling you, social entrepreneurship. That that's a lot. That that yes. is, and I like it. But I like it. I like that. it. Yeah, that's that's unique. Well, then, since we're talking about that, let's talk about data, and I like this one. So, what is data, Miss Carla? Data are units of information. Um, it's usually numeric. However, it's collected through observation. Um, in a more technical sense, data is like a set of values of, of qualitative or quantitative variables about one or more persons or objects. So the word data simply means known facts. 
Um, it especially refers to numbers, but it can also mean words, sounds, and images. Okay, so what are some benefits of collecting data? Collecting data can help to measure a general state of affairs. It's not limited to specific cases or events. Um, when data is gathered, tracked, analyzed in a credible way over time, it can become um, a great tool to measure progress and success or the lack of it. Um, you can also tailor data collection to your specific research aim. Data provides a deeper understanding of your market. It improves your consumer database. It also improves your marketing strategy. So it allows for greater personalization and understanding of your responsibilities as a business leader. I love it. And so I'm going to touch on that because we kind of spoke about this earlier. Data, in my case, if, if you guys seen my post within the next couple of, with well, the last couple of days, I posted a survey about money. And so I have eight surveys. And so what these surveys do is this helps you get to another level if you can ever get started doing it. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is, is I've learned from Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Walmart, that it, you can figure out, you can predict what a customer wants mm -hmm. if you go ahead and send a survey for them to answer four or five mm -hmm. questions. And it takes at least 50. But uh, if you get at least 50 responses now, for one person, you can take those questions and it can be put into a graph and it can tell, like if you're asking how do you want to make money, uh, do you want to make it this way, this way, what, what, what different things you want to do. Or in your case, what books you like to read, what books you like to blah, 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 what, what books. In your case, what, you know, whatever you do, you ask those questions and then um, the Google Docs will put it into a graph if you choose that one. And then that graph will say 71% of people want to make money from home. Okay. So in that case, what that means is every 10 people you meet, you pretty much know seven out of 10 wants to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So you can predict everyone that you meet. Now, yeah, you can listen to one person and, and understand what they want, right. but you can predict out of 100 people, 70. If the graph says 7% or 65%, then it's 6.5 out of uh, 10 you know that they want to do this, or the books, if you talk to at least 50 people and they say, I like to read this kind of book, this kind of book, and out of those 50, it says that, you know, 60 plus percent like to read these kind of books, okay. then maybe you can start understanding, I can write these now because seven out of 10 people exactly. want this kind of book. Exactly. You know, so mm -hmm. those things matter. And I say in two of my uh, surveys, I have over 150 and 175 responses, and Two or three others, I have over 100, and the other two or three is 50 to 75. Okay. So once you get over 50, okay. it's, you know, you'll be able to kind of get it going. So yeah, I love that term, data. Cool. And based on my own data research, this is a shameless plug right here. I'm launching a new talent agency this I like month. that, talent agency. There are, you know, New York and California are kind of known to be the entertainment capitals of the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't know Austin, Texas, they film a lot of movies in Austin. Okay. So it's not too it's not a lot of talent agents here right. in the state of Texas. That's awesome. So we're launching a, a new talent agency this month. How so. sweet it is. <laughs> How yes, sweet it is. I like that. So, I like that. Awesome. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Dr. James, business can go one hundred percent capacity. Talk, let's talk about that. Okay. How will that affect an outbreak if your business goes 100% capacity? Okay, so some people, I've already heard some stories where some people are going in stores not wearing a mask, and some of the people will say, you need, you need to put on your mask. So I'd heard one guy say, make me. You can't make me because the law ain't going to say nothing about it. <laughs> oh, wow. And so, <laughs> so, oh, wow. so he was showing they he was showing oh, they, Yeah. <laughs> isn't that crazy? So. Uh, I Ooh, recommend child. you still wear your mask inside okay. a place. Now, I never have worn it outside because of the sun and making your face look two-toned. So exactly. I'm not going to wear it outside. It doesn't make sense. Right. Mm -hmm. But inside, I'm going to continue to wear it because it's safe. And when you, when you sit down, you get to take it off. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know. And, and most of the time, though, the, trans, the transferring of the COVID-19 yeah, if you walk through somebody's sneeze, can that happen? But, you know, you're not going to always be walking through somebody's sneeze. Mm -hmm. Talking to a person, 
Yeah, the spit can get in your face. So yeah, you wear the mask mm -hmm. if you're talking outside. But I've learned to kind of stand at an angle. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to someone, if I am speed is going this way and not mm -hmm. on you, mm -hmm. and if somebody talking directly to me, I, you know, they don't know it, but I'm kind of sliding a little to the, <laughs> so they just split or hit me on my shirt or something, you know. <laughs> a puddle. They yeah. gonna spit out a puddle. <laughs> but, but what they're trying to say now is 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 that thinking there's an outbreak that's gonna happen uh, because of because of, uh, of you know of this. Mm -hmm. I'm of the thinking it's not because of the people taking the vaccine. And the ones that are not, but you know, I think it's going to be. Uh, it, we've lost 527,000 people. Now, mm -hmm. that number scares me, scares me a lot. But that number is being focused on. What I did figure out, and what I did some research on, and this is going to trip you out. Every year, guess how many people die? We're not talking about because of this or that. Just mm -hmm. people die every year. And when you add up how many people are born every year, we have about 100 million or so people that are born every year. We have 55 to 65 million people that die every year. Okay. 55 to 65 million. We've okay. lost 527,000. So by itself, at first when you think about it, man, that's, I'm so scared of that number. Oh my God, that's a half a million people has died because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But when you look at those numbers of how many people die, period, per year, and, and that means from everything, from, from natural causes to everything, 55 million, not thousand, million a, a year. So what this research has showed me, from what I heard, that the number from 55 to 65 million is going to catch up to that 100 sooner or later, and then uh, what's going to happen is going to be a, a balance. Hmm. See, back in 1950, there was, am I saying that right? No, I'm sorry. Back in the 1400s, there was about one point some billion people on the earth. Mm -hmm. I think back in the 1900s, it was around two point some billion. Mm -hmm. Now we have 7.7 .7 billion people wow. on the planet. Mm -hmm. So it's more and more. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So are you happy about the um, businesses going 100% capacity? Now, I am because I love to go out to eat. And so going out to eat, uh, and you say, well, but see, I like to pass out my business card. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, you know so I, it's been a long time since I had someone say, no, thank you, like they're scared to take my card. I think I had to have one time, maybe when it first started March, April, May. Mm -hmm. But after that, I hadn't had anyone, you know, turn it down other than, you know, you always run in, into that occasional person that, mm -hmm. no, thank you, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. But most people take the card, whether they throw it away or not, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. So I'm glad because not just that, but uh, uh, I'm a business, you're a business, Miss Carol's a business, Miss mm -hmm. Carla's a business. And even though the capacity part doesn't affect us because we're small business, I can feel for the bigger business mm -hmm. and for the, the restaurants that were struggling because of 50% capacity and less. Mm -hmm. Now they can fill up the plates. Mm -hmm. And so even though some people can kind of judge against it. Well, that's what I was telling a lot of my colleagues and friends, if you will, they're looking at it from a consumer point of view. Right. That, oh, they're, you know, the state of Texas is putting our lives in, in jeopardy. Right. This is absurd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Texas is a business-friendly state. Absolutely. Right. Right. Texas is very much a conservative Republican state right. where they put their resources in businesses. Right. Businesses well, I mean, a, a business in Texas can make a million dollars before they start taxing you right. in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell you? They're business friendly. They, they, they want to make sure that the businesses are covered and taken care of right. before the regular small people. Right. Absolutely. How sweet it is. Absolutely. So let's move on because we could talk about that for a while. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we only got a few minutes on the show. Right. So. <laughs> The power of motivation and inspiration. This is one of my favorite topics. I love it okay? too, yeah. But we put it at the end, so we won't have much of time. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get inspired, Dr. James? Well, inspiration inspires a lot of different people depending on what they're doing. So, for the, you know, I can go through a lot of different type people, but mm -hmm. for the sake of the time, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about business owners, yes. right? Mm -hmm. What should inspire you 
is two things first, helping people and money. Mm. Helping people because you'll be blessed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not just helping people to bless people, but help mm -hmm. people with your services. Right. Absolutely. Because it's commerce. Yes. And money, because if you really always put it on a back burner, it's always not about the money, and not about the money, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> on this planet, <laughs> in this world, absolutely. That that's what you got to have. Right. You know, when you pass away one day, hopefully when we're 80 plus, 90 plus, right. um, money don't matter then. Right. But just because you want to make money don't mean you, that you have to uh, use it for any selfish manner. Mm -hmm. You can make money and help people with absolutely. it. Absolutely. You can make money and what's wrong with uh, helping your family and your kids have a better life? What's wrong with uh, sharing it with homeless or people that may need it in a certain way? Uh, so inspiration comes from helping people and money. I think that should be the first thing. Uh, family can be included. You know, mm -hmm. you can say family. That's still people. Yes. So family, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that was actually one of the, one of the reasons I wanted to be a millionaire. Okay. <laughs> God, God put this in my spirit from the time I was little bitty. I wanted to be a millionaire. Really? I didn't know how, but I wanted Come to be a millionaire. Way. I wanted to change my family tree, mm -hmm. and I wanted to buy homes and put homeless people in them. Right. So that, that was always my goal okay. I, from a very small child. Well, how are you inspired, Ms. Carla? What inspires you? One thing that really inspires me is seeing the success of young people getting their dreams met and fulfilled in business. Youngpreneurs. Mm -hmm. I should have known that. I should have known that, right, Ms. Uh, Carla? That's because she's uniquely Absolutely, different. Absolutely, there wouldn't be any other way. <laughs> That's because you're uniquely different, right? You got it, Dr. James. <laughs> How sweet it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Dr. James, how do you motivate others? All right, I love this part because the key, if you're a business, you need to see what motivates others. So let's say if you're dealing with um, a book publisher, and you're talking to a person that's tr trying to write a book. So what motivates them to write this book? And then when they tell you, because you, most people don't ask that question. What motivates you to, you know? But I don't always have to ask that question. I can just listen and I can mm -hmm. tell. But if you don't, can't quite tell, ask. Mm -hmm. What motivates you to, to like write this book? And if I were you, I would use that because they'll tell you. Mm -hmm. And then you can help, you know, you can push on that point because right. that motivation will get you paid and keep them coming back. Absolutely. Same thing with you. Now tell me the talent agency, right? Premier, Premier Lighthouse Talent Agency. Okay, so this talent agency, same thing. Mm -hmm. What's gonna motivate them to come deal with you for the talent? What, why are you so special? So you have to figure out what, what is gonna be the motivation and why they'll use you over some other place. Mm -hmm. Or why would they call you? Because we get them work. We actually put them with cast and There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the motivation. And we empower people to use their gifts right. See? as a light for others. I love so, that. Right. Miss Carla, how do you motivate others? I motivate others by encouraging them mm -hmm. and to just reach and stretch beyond their limits. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Really? Nice. So motivating others, to me, uh, outside of that, can come in, in the form of when you're teaching a course. Mm -hmm when you're uh, even having a show. Right. Um, you, you can be an inspiration and a motivation to someone that's trying to do certain things that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that could absolutely uh, enhance a person's chance of kind of what they're doing. What I'd like to talk about first right now, Ms. Brittany, is tell everybody about the talent agency again. Okay. Uh, when is it starting? Has it already started? Um, how to get in touch with you and all the talent that, you know, is it any talent or what? That was a lot of questions that you were. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. want you to elaborate. So, so from your lighthouse agency, mm -hmm. uh, we're empowering the gifted to be a light to others. Okay. It's based on the scripture, First Peter 2 and 9. Okay. Um, okay. We are, what was your other questions? You asked me 25 I know. questions. And when is it starting? Uh, we are launching this month, March. Okay. Um, we currently have 28 on our roster, on our talent roster. Um, you can come and, and submit your information to Premier Lighthouse with a Z, mm -hmm. lighthouse with a Z, okay. dot com. Um, and we're pretty much a bridging a gap between the entertainment industry and those who want to be using their gifts. So if you're an actor or if you're a model, if you're a singer, songwriter, if you dance, 
Um, we have fitness professionals. Mm -hmm. We have so there are a myriad of you'd be surprised at the jobs that they you know that are available for that they're casted for. Like gotcha. I just did a Facebook commercial where they needed a dancer. They also had actors. We were riding horses and it, it was like okay, well, what do you want us to do? Right. There's so many different things that you, there are hand models, there are you know print right. work and all of that is is paid jobs for great, people in the great. industry. So. So, Ms. Carroll, I'm going to put you on the spot. What are you, <laughs> you say you're working on something. What are you working on? Tell us what's, what's going on. What's, the, what's going on? It's not a book, you say, so I know, I know it ain't a book. Okay. Come on. All right. I got to say the name, though, of the book. I forgot to state it. Okay. It's Reinstitute. All Reinstitute. Means, they're restarting over again. I'm glad that you asked me that, Dr. Jane, because it's been burning in my spirit. I am working on somebody else's book right now. Um... It's called Essence of the Heart. Okay. okay. And uh, by Margaret, her name is Margaret. I'm going to leave it like that. But I also, this is something that Dr. James don't know. Okay. I have my own, I'm a producer of my own TV show. I love it. Okay. Called Carol Show. I love okay. it. We done did like three awesome. settings. And it's like the COVID-19 pushed us back. But it. uh, it's coming out. It's called the Carol Show. Finally, okay. you told me. Awesome. It, it's been a secret for a while. Yeah, because you don't want to <laughs> jinx anything. Right, because, right. you know, I'm, I ain't worried about it jinx, but you just want to make sure you, you got sure all your right. ducks in a row and everything. I love it. Yep. That is good. Okay. And see, that's progress. That's from when we Elevation. met all the way to this moment. See, that makes me proud of you Absolutely. because from when we met, Absolutely. none of this was going other than the, the books. Right. You grew all that other stuff Absolutely. through time, Absolutely. through the learning. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I'm so happy. Absolutely. And I do have to say this. I am a motivational speaker. I, I inspire it. people. I, love I have my own two podcasts and I just launched on Facebook. Uh, Papa had me on speaking and gave me, and speaking to the women. Speaking to the women. Okay. Well, Miss Carla, you got something quickly that you want to share with us? Well, I just want to say congratulations to all, and we're just looking forward to supporting and helping you to push along the way. I love it. Thank you. I love it. Well, we are getting to the end of our show, viewers, and we're so glad that you tuned in. Uh, this was a, a jam-packed show with some awesome people. Yeah. Awesome women, Miss Brittany, Miss Carol, Miss Carla. Uh, oh my goodness, this this has been wonderful. This was so much knowledge base, and we want to give this every week, uh, every show to everybody that's tuning in and listening. We want to give you so much knowledge. So again, thank you for tuning in to Dr. James McConnell's The Small Business Network, and we're gonna see you guys next week, same channel, same day. Watch us. We love you. How sweet it is. How sweet it is. How sweet it is.